a pay a case again. Susie, you know, say you're blatting now. I got such a beauty. Yo, it's Mr. Lover. Yeah, you're here with PNC Drama TV with the drama girl herself. Let it be known. Shaggy on your dial, wicked and wild, pull a star. Yeah. yeah. So this album right now, tell me how it differs from your previous albums because you know we have the notable, you know, producers. We have the notable artists that you're doing collabs with. I yeah. mean, how is this album totally different, or is it totally different than your previous albums? And did, did you go with a different theme? Did you go with a different look? I mean. There was a, dif a different that. theme as far as, you know, the music. Music changes. You know. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and I wanted to come back to the streets. When I look at the whole vibe of Shaggy overall, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's one thing that everybody was saying, you know, as far as our critics were concerned, was that, yeah, you know, he's an international artist. He sells records, right, right, right. But, you know what I mean? The streets ain't feeling him, you know what I mean? You, right. you can't do dance all. You know, a lot of people figure that you couldn't stand up uh, amongst the bounty killers and the beanie man, which was ironic to me because I was writing a lot of them tunes with Dave Kelly and Tony Kelly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that a lot of them DJ with them are rate DJ, you know right. what I mean, but, um, so I tried to do that with Wild Tonight, okay. and I, I did a song which was, uh, which was unique, the style was unique, the vibe was wicked, you know what I mean, still had the potential to actually do some damage mainstream, but it would con con really conquer the streets. Mm -hmm. We did end up getting the number one with it in Jamaica, number one in, in the Caribbean, but okay. one, as soon as we started a crossover, um, we, we ran into some trouble because the record company couldn't see through that project. They didn't understand the culture of it, yeah. and they didn't want to put that kind of money into it. So they pretty much shut us down by cutting funding. Um, there's not much I could have done to save it at that point because I didn't own the record. Right. You know, I mean, it was owned by Geffen Records. And you're, yeah, you're talking about Geffen Records. Now, tell me about your own label that kind of came out of that. You're, you're finished with Geffen at this point, correct? Mm -hmm. And you have your own label. So talk about your own label, Big Yard Records, is that yeah. correct? How did that come about? Who, who, what other artists are on your label at this point? Is it well, just you, or is it you're kind of expanding? Well, well that, that, that label has been around for the last nine years. We, oh, okay. We used to just have it as a small label to just okay. put out, you know, our own individual dance halls, mm -hmm. show them. But once we didn't connect, we couldn't connect with um, Wild Tonight, I decided that in October, uh, I had the opportunity to get out. My, I was up for renegotiation with, with Geffen Records in October. Mm -hmm. But according to my contract, because we sold so many records, there were clauses in that contract mm -hmm. that they would have to pay me an X amount or something to keep me. Okay. Uh, records ain't selling like how they used to, so it was a heavy chump for them to put us. So it was either they were trying to renegotiate with me to actually work a deal out where we take it on the back end. Right. Mama didn't raise no food. Right, of Re course not. <laughs> record now sell again, so it don't make sense to take nothing on the back end. So it's either them let me go or pay me. Right. You know what I mean? And you opted for... Yeah, to <laughs> let go. So once that yeah, happened, right. I went into the studio. And I came out with Church Eden. And I knew I couldn't go that direction with them with Church Eden. Imagine me walking into Giffen Records with Church Eden and say, that's my next big record, what they would say. Mm. A bunch of guys in suits. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wouldn't, it wouldn't work, you know what I mean? So uh -huh. um, we put it on Big Yard, and we, we released it. And obviously, we had a number one 17 weeks, and number one throughout the Caribbean, one of the biggest number one for last year. Mm -hmm. What it actually do now was basically um, cement Shaggy back into the court. Right. You know what I mean? And got back your ratings because there's a new generation now that's listening to, to dance hall right. that didn't that didn't listen to dance hall from before, so they got into the world music and then we just kind of just keep it going from there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Did a joint venture with VP Records. Exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, because they understood the direction I was going mm -hmm. and and what I wanted to do, and the difference between this deal and them is a joint venture deal. You know right. what I mean? So they're miles ahead, right? Yeah. Well, the thing <laughs> the thing the thing about the thing about it is that. In my deal, where it's different, difference from everyone is that that we both stand the cost. Right. You know what I mean, or even more so, me standing the cost right now. Mm -hmm. You know, because we want to make sure that we, we maintain control. And how you can maintain control, you pay the cost to be the boss. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, we're, we're talking about you working with different artists, and you know, there's a lot of, I guess. A lot of people have different things to say about your music. Whether yeah, yeah you're doing this dance hall, they love it, or they're saying it's more of pop. Yeah. How do you deal with the negative comments that come at you about your music? Whether it's you know they classify it as more of a pop reggae versus a mm -hmm. dance hall hardcore. I mean, what is your response to those who are out there and they they have those cr critiques of your music? Well, my thing is neg uh, um, negativity is the fuel to my fire. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in 1993. No, I'm lying. 96. We had a song called Bombastic. Right. I was in England. And it was a, 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 a reporter from the from the day, from the Sun. Mm -hmm. Actually, wrote Bombastic is driving me ballistic. 
this this record isn't even worth the vinyl it's being pressed on. Wow. Right, right after we came number one, I found out that we were having an interview, a couple of interviews that day, and that same reporter mm -hmm. was supposed to interview me. And he sat wow. right in front of me and praised the record how great it was. Mm. So critics are just that, critics. So what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you call him out? Were you, you know like, I mean? hey? No, no, no. That's, no there was no that's time. I didn't, I didn't give it that much energy. Right. You know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't that. But it, was, it just solidified what I was saying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, um, you can check the track record. You know what I mean? Right. First of all, there's nobody that sold more, more records. There's nobody that would more classic number ones than me. And almost when you check from from Old Carolina, Boombastic, these two, it wasn't me, these were all songs that were not just number one overseas, but they were number one in Jamaica. Okay. And they were a huge number one, right. you know what I mean? And whosoever said we can do this, I can do that, we just proved that with church eating. Right. You know what I mean? So, what am I gonna say no? What now, you know what I mean? And my argument is if you don't get it after 16 years, you'll never get it, you know what I mean? So if you sure. still saying Shaggy is this and Shaggy is that, after 20 million records sold, after huge amount of number one after songs that I've actually written, songs that I've, and I write my own music. A lot okay. of people don't do that. And if you don't get it by now, you will never get it. Okay, so that's what you're telling them. Exactly. If you don't get it by now, you don't get it after, get if it. you don't get it after 16 years, you will never get it. You are a hater. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these older cats, mm -hmm. like, you know, like James Brown, you know, was just a shaggy fan, you know. This man kicked my door open and sat beside me and was like, yo, you're the truth. The world needs to know you're the truth, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did and you do any, uh, so, you know, James Brown, dance moves, would y'all think nah, dance nah, moves? Nah, you know, like nah, but dance, dance moves, nah, it wasn't, wasn't about that. It was just a mutual <laughs> respect, you know what I mean? Mutual respect. I mean, because, you yeah. know, when I, if I was around James Brown, I'd be trying to learn something, you know, get on the good foot. Nah, Jim, James, James and I, James, just, James just came out and watched my show every night. Oh, he did. That was his whole thing. He's a good fan. He came out and just watched my show, and then eventually he just walked into my dressing room one day and shut it behind me and told me what he thought. You know what I mean? So rest in peace. Yeah, my father's big him up. Uh, yeah. So you know, finally, we we we, we want to know what your advice is because there's a lot of artists coming in the game, and you know, everybody yeah. thinks that they can be a you know ha they have an exit. Yeah. What is your honest advice to them, to those who are on the grind, who are trying to be like the next Shaggy, making hits and and coming back and being able to do something really positive or something really great? Your grandmother always have a saying. Old people have a saying. Mm -hmm. See, you carry the donkey to the water, you can't make him drink. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? I can't want it more than you. You dig that? Yeah. You can't, in, in, you can't ex expect record companies and other people to invest their money in you when you don't, you know, you ain't putting that, that effort out. Right. If you get up and dream this every day, you get up and music consumes you, mm -hmm. then you'll make it. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about, you know what I mean? You can have... 10% talent, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and 90% and, and, and attitude and still make it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You've seen that over and over again. Look at Janet Jackson. <laughs> wow. You know. That's my sister, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about Michael? Nah, that's, that's, <laughs> nah, he, nah, he's dope. Michael's he's dope. Nah, you Janet, no, 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 I'm not, let me rephrase. It's not, you know, Janet is dope, but what I'm we saying is. We know drama, hey. You know, there's some people, there's some people that are, that are not incredibly great singers. Right, okay. But they're okay. stars. But they are. You know what I'm saying? And then you have people who are incredibly great singers and writers mm -hmm. who, because they have a really bad attitude or they don't want to work as hard other than that, mm -hmm. just don't make it. How many right. times you see artists that they don't write their own stuff, they can't really sing high notes, they just be safe in a certain zone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Well, I and they and they become big big superstars. Right. You know what I mean? Why? Because they're dedicated and they and they go out there and work. Exactly. You can't take that from Janet Jackson. That's a hard working woman. It is. She you is. know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, I, I, at the end of the day, she ain't no Whitney.